Amen. Well, it's good to see you tonight. Glad to see you in the Lord's house. It sure is glad to see some we haven't seen in a while. Those that have been out sick, good to see Carolyn and Charles back. And they've been out sick, and uh, some of the rest of you, you wasn't here. I guess you were sick, or you hope you had a good reason not to be here. But uh, who else has been out sick? Everybody raising their hand. <laughs> Jimmy was Jimmy was sick Sunday, and uh, and Donna was sick. And, yeah, just a bunch of sickly people. Even aren't you glad for the touch of God on you? They'll get you better. Dalton's sick tonight, so pray for him. Um, they, they're passing it around in the Worthy family. And uh, probably some old Miss Dora and Nancy and Bailey's sick tonight. Pray for them. She texts. They've been to emergency rooms and uh, urgent cares and all today. I think all three of them have. So pray for them. And then Miss Becky told me just a minute ago that one of the waitresses that worked over at the Tadpole Fish Camp got killed in a car accident a while ago. Uh, so pray for that family. I think she said, what was your name? You know, Miss Becky? I don't know your name. You work for Danielle. Danielle? Mm -hmm. Okay, she said she was 20 years old, around 20. That's the second one in about a year over there that's died in an automobile accident. So pray for that young lady's family. I know they're hurting and grieving tonight, and pray God's will be done. Let's stand if you would, and we'll go to Lord, and we'll pray, and we'll take prayer requests here in just a few moments. And uh, you get to share with us. I know Miss Emily's sick tonight, and she's been sick for uh, maybe a couple of weeks, so let's keep her in your prayers also. And just a lot of people. Good to see uh, Don in the back. Don's back. He was sick Sunday, and Ron and Hope, glad they're here. Hey, we're glad you're all here. Amen. And uh, so we just hope and pray the Lord just keep the rest of us well as best he can. Amen. So let's bow our heads and go to the Lord in word of prayer. And ask the Lord's blessing to be upon the services and upon these requests. Uh, Brother Danny Henry, if you'd pray for us, please. Hey, Amen. Remain standing if you will. Please turn your hymn books. Page 360. Page 360. We'll sing the first and the last verse. Leaning on the everlasting arms. What a fellowship. What a joy divine. You may be seated. My dad's going to come and sing for us tonight. You pray for him. The Lord will use him and bless the song.
Amen. I'm thankful that mercy called me by name. Just one of the common, no title to hold, and no great distinction into my soul. A long and defeated, no hope. God for his mercy. If it wasn't for his mercy, we would have got judgment. You know where we'd all be tonight if that had been the case. Thank God for his mercy. All right, let's have the guys come. We're going to take prayer requests uh, tonight. And those of you that have uh, requests, to speak up. Well, you might speak too loud in the microphone, but uh, share with us what the Lord has upon your heart. All right, Sister Karen has her hand up first. I will just pray for my children and my husband and then for everyone who's sick. Pray for my mom and dad. All right, Miss Jada, you sure will. Anyone else on it? Uh, uh, Donna? Uh, first of all, I got a praise report. I went to the lung doctor today, and I've been quit smoking now for four and a half weeks. And not easy, but 
Uh, he said my lung function was a whole lot better and my lungs sounded more clear than they had in years. Um, and he said, I made his day. He said, he's very proud of me. So that made me feel good. Amen. Um, and uh, said, I've lost 16 pounds. I don't know where it went, but I'm not complaining. <laughs> and, uh, and just and pray, for, pray for my Aunt Janice. She's still going through a rough time. Okay. All right. Remember Miss Janice. All right. All right. Who, anybody else on this side? Brother Bill? I'm going to pray for Thelma, Braden, Braden, and Buddy Nance. Okay. All right. Uh, Miss Teresa? Pray for Riley. I slammed a car door in her hand a minute ago. Oh. Uh, but I have a praise report. Two December 2014, we were told that Dustin had cirrhosis of the liver. After that, he underwent major heart surgery, having his heart rebuilt. We got his labs back, and his liver is 100% clear. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. The Lord's good, isn't he? Amen. All the time. All right. Anyone else on that side? Got a prayer request. All right. How about this section right here? Any, any prayer requests right here in this section? Russell? I'd just like some travel and mercies for Friday and Saturday for us. Okay. Pray for Russell and Leanne. Le just you and Leanne? Okay. So pray for them as they'll be traveling. All right, anyone else in this section? Okay, everybody good? Wonderful. Okay, Brother Randy. I have one. Some of you know me. I've been here <clears throat> before. Uh, I'm a child of God. Amen. Watch the blood. Amen. <clears throat> Along about May of last year, I started getting sick. Every day, a little bit, day, sicker and sicker and sicker. And didn't know what was wrong. In October, I was walking back from a barn, and I was praying as I walked. I said, Lord, what's wrong with me? A little voice come to me and said, cancer. And I said, what? Cancer. Mm. I was on Sunday, and I went to the doctor on Monday, sent me for CT scan. I had cancer on my right kidney. Uh, they uh, were successful in removing it. I go back in March for another CT scan. And uh, I just want you all to pray for me that it's clear. Amen. If sure it's will. not, i got to have a kidney taken out. But I feel so good right now. I believe God's healing hand is taking care Amen. 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 He's Amen. able. Amen. Good to have you tonight, Brother Randy. That's Sister Linda's brother, so we're glad he's here. We prayed for you when we heard you had cancer. Now, I'm glad God still answers prayer. Amen. People say what they want to. I know he does because I've seen him do it time and time again. Sister Frankie. Uh, continue to pray for my family and my lost loved ones, and also pray for Paisley's mom and dad. Um, her mom passed out today, and we had to call 911 out. And um, she was having an anxiety attack, and she quit breathing. And like this scared all of us to death, but they finally, you know, got her settled down and everything. So she, she was okay when we left, but this is the first time it's ever happened to her. And she passed out. And, and my mommy and daddy. Thank you, your mommy and daddy, yeah. And so it was really scary, but, you know, just pray for them. Okay. Pray for her and... Uh, my grandson, Christopher. Okay. All right. We sure will. Okay. Anyone else? Mama and Daddy. Okay. Miss Becky? Pray for my cousin, the Fowler family. Nice Thursday. Tammy uh, was sick, and her brother went to get gas to take her to the doctor, but when he came back, she was dead. Hmm. She's 52. And then the brother wound up in the hospital with double pneumonia, also his wife and grandmother. So he just came home today, so they haven't been able to bury her. So just pray for the whole family. Okay. Because they're all lost. Okay, we sure will. Brother Robert? Continue to pray for our radio ministry and the Catholics that we're trying to reach with the gospel. And also, I think Diane said, uh, then Stacy Shiflett, pastor of the church up towards Campobello, she says she found out today that uh, his wife, has cancer and only has about a month to live. So that's Phil Cybert. Cybert, yeah, that's Phil okay. Cybert. Yeah, his wife. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, she has a uh, had a brain tumor and it was when they operated on it, it was found out it was stage four cancer. And uh, there's been a uh, I think Brother Joey Gibson when it preached for us uh, New Year's Eve uh, night here. Uh, he's been helping Brother Phil out with the services up there. So 
pray for Brother Phil and pray for the church. Pray for Brother Joey as he helps him, fills in for him. Okay, uh, anybody else in this section? Go back right on this side. Little Vesta. My sister called me Tuesday, I believe it was, and um, said that my mama's only brother that's living. Um, but he had a, a friend that he kind of took care of, but she said he's getting mean and doesn't really, and I think it's probably Alzheimer's because he goes places and can't remember how to get back home. But I haven't had time to go visit with him, but I need to check on him. But his name's Fred. Some of y'all, I think you may even know him, Fred Skipper. Uh, but remember him and their family. Natalie? I have a praise report. Um, my friend Brooklyn's dad finally got out of the hospital, and he's in less pain and stuff. So Good. I'm pretty sure he lost, so pray for him. Okay. All right. Brother Denny? Those three young teenagers who killed over the weekend is from Union High School. Pray for all those families. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Brother Marvin. Yes. I'd like for the church to pray for my brother. He called me and he said he's coming Sunday morning. He called and got the times and everything. He said he's, he was real excited Amen. about the, the, the fish fry and Brother Scott Dink preaching. And uh, I just pray that he won't change his mind. Yeah. I ask God to keep working on him. Amen. Yeah. We look forward to him coming Sunday. Hope he comes. Miss Doris? I want to praise the Lord tonight that I'm back. Amen. <laughs> and making Amen. the devil mad, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But I appreciate all your prayers. And I really miss it when I don't get to come. But I praise the Lord that I'm getting to do my therapy. I don't think it's happened much, but <laughs> it's good to be able to go. Yeah. Thank Amen. y'all for being so good to me. Amen. All right. Anyone else? Melissa or Wanda? Get Wanda while you're there. Just, um, I'd like you to pray for Becky Sutton and just continue to pray for healing for mom with her foot. Okay. All right. Melissa? Uh, I'd like the church just to pray for me. I've had... Um, they're going to refer me to another doctor. I've had some high blood pressure over the last couple of months, so I'm going to another specialist. I've got to figure out why. Okay. All right. Pray for pray for Ruby. She recovers from her surgery. And I'll pray. Also pray for Sister Faye Melton. Uh, she's been having a lot of pain, I think, from her therapy and that she's going through. She had knee replacement, so keep her in your prayers. And uh, Brother Jack? Uh, pray for uh, Sister Faye Brother Frank, uh, and her mother. Okay. Her mother's standing in need of prayer real bad. Okay. All right. Let's pray for them. They wasn't here Sunday either. It's sort of hard for them to get out in this bad weather, but keep uh, keep them in your prayers. Anyone else tonight? Unspoken uh, request? Who? Ron, Brother Ryan? That young man they made mention of that went to school at the, uh, in Knoxville, Brother Sexton's church and college. They found him dead in the lake. Hmm. Yeah. So pray for that family, pray for Brother Sexton in the college. I think it's Crown College. Yeah. In the church. Um, yeah, we heard about that at the fellowship meeting Monday. Also, we found out that Brother Thomas Caldwell, he uh, retired and uh, resigned his church on Sunday. And uh, he'd been there for a long time. And Brother Caldwell is 83 years old. Most of you know him, him and his wife. They sing for us when they come. Brother and Sister Caldwell and got a young man from over at Cowpens, actually, uh, that they voted in from the church, Joshua Lawson, so pray for him. He's out of Brother Joey Wampner's church, Resurrection Baptist Church in Cowpens. So uh, just pray for that transition. Pray the Lord bless that work and bless that ministry and the Lord to meet their needs. Let's have the ushers to come forward and receive the offering. Also pray for our shut-ins. Miss Dizey, uh, seen her and Brother Jimmy a moment ago and talked for them a little while. And she said, tell everybody that, uh, that uh, they love them. And that they miss y'all. And I told them how much we miss them. So uh, keep all our shut-ins. Miss Dizey, Miss Thelma, and Jimmy, and Helen and Smiley. And it's good to have some of those that hadn't been able to come, come lately. Brother, brother um, uh, Willie, he's out in the vestibule. Glad to see him tonight. Pray for Jennifer Busey and Jane Brown and 
others, and the Lord just continue to touch them. Amen. Get them back with me. Let's ask the Lord's blessing to be upon the offering, the also upon these requests, and the service. Brother Buddy Jackson, if you'd pray for us, please. Dear Father, we thank thee this evening. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Here, yes. Come to worship thee. And Father, we pray that thou, that thy spirit will help us all empty ourselves of ourselves and the Lord's yes. words this evening, that we might be filled with thee and thy glory. And now as we proceed to receive the offering, we pray that thou will bless the gift and the giver and bless us uh, to this service. In Jesus' yes. name we pray. Amen. Thank you, brother, buddy. I'm saved by the blood of the crucified one. Well, if you're glad you're saved, say amen. amen. Aren't you glad you're not going to hell? Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm glad the way's been paved. Paid by the blood of the crucified one. Somebody said, I don't like that bloody religion. <laughs> the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. I think Brother Tommy Turner may have had something on there today about that a post today said something like, if it wasn't for that bloody religion, we'd have the blood of of men's, hand, of, of men's sins on our hands because there'd be no remedy. But I'm glad that there is a remedy, and of course that is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me make a couple of announcements. The sign-up sheet for next Wednesday's meal is on the table out there if you'd like to sign up for that. And then uh, this coming Saturday, uh, Tim's Sunday School class is going to uh, Strawberry Hill at 9.30. 9.30 for breakfast and so I uh, wanted to announce that, and I'm sure if some of the rest of you wanted to show up, he wouldn't get mad about it. Uh, some of you, even though you're not in that class, uh, I'm going to show up. <laughs> Amen. I'm not in that class, but I like Strawberry Hill. And uh, so if you can go, that would be a blessing to go and have some good fellowship and take part in that. Amen. I think uh, about covers everything as far as announcements. Now, we uh, will not be here next week. We'll be leaving Monday morning. And uh, we're going on a cruise, the Singing at the Seas cruise again. Uh, Mark and Tammy is going. Tim and Cassie is going. Also, Tammy's mom and her husband's going. And me and Linda's going. So we're looking forward to it. Really enjoyed it last year and looking forward to it this year. We ask that you pray for us. Because two things. Number one, we got to fly into Atlanta. 
And, uh, and number two, we got to fly back into Atlanta when we come back. And uh, just say, just just hope they don't get it. Don't 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 get all our luggage and everything missed, lost, and all that kind of stuff. I'd hate to wear the same outfit on the boat all week. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, think, don't think of the bad things. Think of the good things. Maybe they get it all transferred. But anyway, I appreciate you praying for our safety while we're gone, and certainly we'll miss you. And, and uh, we got men that are something comes up. We got Brother Ronnie. We got Brother Dennis there, and Brother Jack, and these other men that are on the deacon board. Brother Bill, trustees, and. Uh, Brother Robert, I, we, we got plenty of men to take care of y'all, and I'm praying nothing happens uh, while we're gone and no, no, uh, nothing comes up. I just hope everything just goes smooth, amen. Praise the Lord. Turn your Bibles. I'm going to read a text to you once again this Wednesday night from 2 Timothy chapter 4, one we've read many times before. And this verse of Scripture is so familiar that most of us probably could quote, quote it by heart, or at least part of it anyway, uh, that the Apostle Paul was uh, exhorting young Timothy and it come time for Paul's departure to be at hand. You know, uh, we, don't, we don't ever know where we're going to leave this world. We just have to be ready when we do leave. And let me just say tonight, there's a lot of people that have made a profession, but they've never really possessed nothing in their heart and their life uh, as far as the Lord Jesus Christ is concerned. Let me just say that it's not by what we say, it's what we receive in our hearts and our lives. And we all must receive the gift in order for us to experience and benefit from that gift, of course, being the Lord Jesus Christ. But uh, it's more than just being saved. I thank God for the privilege that we have to serve and what we have, the opportunity that we have to do for him. And we're going to talk about that a little bit tonight concerning that part of Paul's testimony. Because he said in verse number uh, 6, Romans chapter 4, uh, I'm sorry, 2 Timothy chapter 4. It says, for I'm now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. Now we've covered that the last few Wednesday nights on the fight. And Paul did fight some battles. Paul went through a lot of things that you and I will never face as a Christian. And can I say there's a lot of other Christians that face some things and went through some things that you and I will never face. You realize that all the apostles died a martyr's death. They either were crucified, they were had their heads chopped off. And let me just say, I don't think that we'll ever face that as far as our life is concerned. If you've ever read the Fox's Book of Martyrs, you'll read in there how some of those old saints of God, how they stood for Christ and how they gave their life. Some was burned at the stake. Can you only imagine what that must have been like? Some were boiled in a hot, big pot of oil. They were put in the boiling oil. And now today, if somebody just looks at us cross-eyed, we're ready to quit. Somebody says something about us, we're ready to say, well, if that's what it's going to be, I don't have to do that. I don't have to go there. I don't have to put up with this. Just think about what those people went through. But I'll give you one better than that. You think about what Jesus went through in order that you might have life, that you might have life more abundantly. And Paul fought a good fight. I've heard, I've heard some people say that uh, these um, roughnecks and rednecks and all these other kind of necks, <laughs> I've heard them say, I've always liked a good fight. Well, I don't know about you, but I never did care a whole lot about fighting. I bruise too easy. I bleed too easy. So I've never was one to pick a fight. I wasn't going to pick no fight. I wasn't going to let nobody run over me if I could help it. But now let me just say, sometimes I can run a lot better than I can fight. So I don't want to pick no fight. But let me just say, in the Lord's work, <laughs> If it come to an end right now, it's been a good fight. Amen. I don't take nothing back that I've did for the Lord. I don't want to go back and undo anything. Oh, sure, there'd be a lot of things I'd undo in my life that I know that I've done where I failed the Lord. And I could, if I could undo some of those things, I would. But the, fault, the fight that we have fought these 50 years, I wouldn't take nothing back. I praise God for it. 
It's been a good fight. And I don't know about you, but I don't, I don't mind fighting if I know I'm going to win. <laughs> if I know I'm going to win, I don't mind fighting. And that's what we are. We're on the winning side. Choir sang that song Sunday morning. We're on the winning side. So thank God for that. Amen. But Paul said, I fought a good fight. He said, I finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which is the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. So we've already talked about the fight. Paul said, I fought a good fight. We spoke pretty much intentionally upon that fight and what we go through in our battles that we have. And tonight we'd like to look at the second part of Paul's testimony where he says, I finished my course. Now, I've always said this, and I've said this quite a bit lately, that I want to finish right. I thank God for the day that I started on the day I got saved. Oh, I praise the Lord for the start. But let me just say, even though we started right, the devil has a way of working in our hearts and working in our lives and sometimes getting us off track. I know some people that started right and they got off the track. They're off the road that they used to be on, which was the path of righteousness for Christ's sake. They're out in the world. They're doing the things of the world, living like the devil. I think of a young man that started a wonderful ministry over around Sunset, South Carolina with a girl's home. Started a wonderful ministry, had a wonderful ministry, had, had, had close to, at one time with boys and girls both in that home, probably had close to 50 or 60 uh, young, young uh, people in that home that were wayward and hard to deal with and, and, and their families and their parents put them in those homes to get some help. Had a tremendous ministry. And one day that man decided that he wanted to run off with one of those young girls. And he did. And as far as I know today, that man has still never gotten right with God. I don't understand that. Out of all the things that the accolades and the praise and everything that they've done in times past, he lost it all when he turned his back on God. You see, not, it's not sometimes how we start, but it's how we finish. And I hope and pray when it comes to the end of my life's journey, when my funeral service is conducted, if the Lord doesn't come back, I hope the one that stands behind this pulpit, I don't need the them to brag on how good I am because Paul says I am what I am by the grace of God. And the Bible says there's no goodness in all whatsoever. Only thing's good about us is the Lord Jesus Christ. But I hope, I, I hope those that stand behind the pulpit and conduct my funeral, I hope they can still say that he was faithful and that he finished right. I believe with all my heart, every one of us has a course in our life that God wants us to follow. And I thank God for the course that he's laid in my path and laid in my way. And let me just say, we're all going the same way as far as our salvation and our redemption is concerned. But God leads us in different areas in our life to do different things. Some missionaries, some are preachers, some are uh, teachers, some are evangelists, some are, uh, are works in the Lord's work in different ways. And uh, there's, so there's different ways and different courses that we can go. But whatever course that we're in, we ought to try to finish that course and we ought to try to finish it in the right way. Over in the book of Timothy chapter 1, I want to read verses 1 down through verse number 7 there and bring a thought or two from you concerning this. And talking about the course that you and I are on. Paul says in Philippians chapter 1, it says, Paul and Timotheus, the service of Jesus Christ to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi and with the bishops and deacons. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making requests with joy. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day unto now. And then verse number six is a, a verse that we have used quite a lot and thank God for it. And that's what I'd like to mention to you a little bit tonight. It says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, 
because I have you in my heart in so much as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye are partakers of my grace. As we look at this particular portion of scripture here uh, concerning uh, the Christian's life and the believer's life and rejoicing sometimes even in spite of suffering. And listen, sometimes we will suffer for the cause of Christ. Like I said a moment ago, I don't think we'll ever suffer to the extent as the Apostle Paul suffered. And as these other people that I mentioned a moment ago, those that died the martyr's death, I don't think we'll ever face those suffering. But you and I, we will have some suffering in this life. And the Bible tells us that we will have persecution. We will be persecuted for what we do and what we stand. And there might be some here tonight, the, the very course that you chose to take for your life when Christ came into your heart and saved you, you probably, uh, some people have probably talked about you and run you down because of the course that you decided to take. But let me just say tonight, it is more profitable to serve God than it is to go back on what you told God you was going to do. I told you what that young man said Sunday, uh, Saturday afternoon when he come down here and gave his heart and life to Christ. When I asked him, I said, have you ever asked the Lord to save you? He said, yes, preacher, I did, but I didn't mean it. I just wondered tonight, do we really mean it when we ask God to save us? Now listen, God, Christ, Christ is not going to die over and over and over again for our sins. But the Bible says sometimes because of the way we live, we crucify Christ afresh. He only can die once for our sins. But we see here that Paul says, being confident in this one thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now you and I know that the day of Jesus Christ is talking about the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe it's close. And I thank God for the course that we have to follow. I thank God for the good work that he's placed us in. That we can serve, serve him and live him. And there's one thing about being on this course. I believe there's a lot of things that happen just in us serving the Lord. Let me just mention a few of them tonight that I jot down. Because of this course, we will develop relationships. We develop a relationship. How is your relationship tonight to with your heavenly father? Are you on speaking terms with him tonight? Amen. Hey, I know he knows us, but do we know him like we say we know him? After, I, I, you know, I know more, not much, but I know more today than I knew when I first got saved. And the reason I know more in, in, in serving the Lord and on the course that we're on is because I know more about him, Brother Marvin. To start with, the only thing I knew was that he loved me. That's what the preacher said. That's what the Bible said. That's what he preached that, that day when I got saved. He preached that he died for sinners, and I certainly was a sinner. Lost and undone, even though I never drunk any liquor, liquor, wine, beer. Don't know what it tastes like. I've never done any drugs. I've never lived a righteous life. But hey, I was, hey, I was only good enough for hell. But one day the Lord reached out and saved me. And let me just say, when I began that course in my life, and I believe with all my heart it began when I got saved. I believe that course begins when you got saved. But when I, when I started that course, I began to make some new relationships. Amen. Paul says, the things that I once loved, I now hate. And the things that I hate, I now love. And that's the way that I've heard some of you testify. Boy, I didn't care anything about going to church. I wasn't going to church. I wasn't going to have anything to do with church. I was, I was through, some, I heard someone tell me today, I was through with it, I wasn't going back. But let me just say, when you develop a relationship, hey, and like I say, it's not religion, it's relationship. When you develop a relationship and you develop that relationship in such a way that you love God like you ought to, there'll be some things that you'll do you says you never would do before. Why? Because of that relationship that has been developed between you and a holy God. Amen. Hey, just think about it. He'll take time out to think about you and to think about me, the creator of this universe. Hey, that placed the stars in their place, placed the planets in their sockets. Hey, and spins this world on its axis and keep us on its right balance is the one that developed a relationship with us. The divine creator of this earth and this world and all its beauty and all its splendor. He took time out to develop a relationship with us. And a relationship is based on what? L-O-V-E. 
And when I developed a relationship with him, and let me just say, I wonder sometimes, do we really love Jesus like we say we do? Brother Buddy, that relationship when we have love, that means we want to be with him and around him. Amen. Did we spend some time with him today? Did we have a prayer time? Did we have a devotional time? Did we have a little meditation with him today? And, you know, what kind of relationship do we have? And that's how I developed that relationship with him. And as you develop that relationship with him, and that's all about the course that we chose to follow. I, some of you can think about some of the relationships you had before you got saved. All I can say to that is, oh, what a difference when Jesus passed by. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. But when I developed a relationship with him, I developed a relationship also with the church. Amen. You say amen. Be all right. You say amen on Wednesday night. Don't cost no extra. Thank God for the church. Thank God for the church house. And I praise the Lord for the privilege that we have tonight to be in his house, to worship him. And listen, when we have a, have a relationship and we love him the way we're supposed to, and we have that love relationship with him, we'll love to come to his house. Amen, Amen. Amen preacher. How true that is. Now, I know Wednesday night's the cream of the crop, they say. But listen, we've had so much sickness and, th 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 and things going on, bad weather. A lot of people haven't been able to come to church like they wanted to and should and, and, and would like to. And I understand that. We have shut-ins that can't come. I realize and I know that. But we have, you're not going to believe this, but I believe there's people who just stays out of church because they don't want to come. That's not a good relationship. Miss Nora told Linda the other day, said something about talking about us being at church all the time. She named me and Linda and I think Danny and Donnie and several more she named. She said, they're always, y'all always at church. Y'all don't ever miss. I didn't know I was supposed to. <laughs> Somebody asked me a while ago, says, when are, I'm just throwing this out here now. You can do what you want to. I know how I love Jesus. I know how I love his house. I know how I love his work. But somebody asked me a while ago, said, when y'all leave it on Saturday? I said, no, 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 I ain't leaving on Saturday. Go, go no cruise. I'm going to be at church on Sunday. Amen. Oh, ain't no amens right there. <laughs> I'm not starting my vacation on Sunday. They say, you, yeah, you don't suppose to, preacher. You're the pastor. <coughs> he don't hold me no different, more standards than he does you. And I got news for you. I'm going to be back for the next Sunday. You know why? I'm on a course. There's a love relate. Now listen, I'm not saying you don't love Jesus if you don't do that. You just don't love him enough. <laughs> Amen. But hey, it's, you know, people don't like it. You're not going to hear this up at First Baptist Church. But I still believe from all my heart, folks, it's got to be Jesus first. Either he's first or he's not first. And when I developed a relationship with him and I loved him and I developed a relationship with his church, I developed a relationship with his people. Thank God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. What a blessing it is to have good Christian friends. What a blessing it is to have good church members. And let me say tonight, there's absolutely no reason that Church families and church people and church members ought to hold grudges against each other. God help you if you do that. You can't say I love God and don't love his children. The Bible says, hey, if you don't love your brethren, don't say you love your brethren. Don't, don't say you love God whom you have not seen when you don't love your brother who you have seen. So don't come here with this stuff. That I, you know, I got all against this one. I had a grudge against it. I'll take that thing to the grave. I, hey, I know how they've done me. Hey, just get over it. It don't mean nothing. And you're robbing yourself of a blessing. You're taking away from your joy. You're taking away from your... God help anybody to go out a side door and shake the hands with somebody else. And I've had them to do that before. If somebody greets me at church, they say, how you doing, preacher? I'm going to say, I'm doing great. How you doing? I'm not going to bypass them. I'm not going to ignore them. You know why? Because I love the people of God. 
Have you ever had anybody hurt your feelings, preacher? Oh, well, let me count the times. You talking about tonight? <laughs> no. Amen. That's the way it is, you know. Oh, we've all had our feelings hurt. But it's amazing to me, people don't think the preacher is supposed to get his feelings hurt. I love the people of God. There's some of you here that I've known some of you in this building longer than it's about as I know my own family. I've known Brother Ronnie for I don't know how long. When, what year did you start going to Carolina? 71. 50 years, close to it. I got 47 years. 46 years. Brother Donnie. Well, Brother Donnie, a little bit longer than that, I guess. Amen. Brother Danny. And Sister Carolyn. Anybody else in here as old as I am? <laughs> Brother Tim and Cassie know them just about all their life. I mean, back, back when they first got married. Mode Vesta for a long time. You know what? I had with Miss Carolyn for a long time. Knowed her for 82 years. <laughs> and you know what? I hadn't quit loving them, Brother Buddy. Amen. Amen. Has any of these people ever hurt my feelings? They probably have. But if I have, I don't really remember it. But you know what? I probably hurt your feelings a time or two, too. I ain't never heard your feelings have a Carol. Not tonight. No, tonight you mean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, we all do that. But why carry a grudge? When we develop a relationship, we're on a course. And now listen, I got news for you. I say this only by the help and by the grace of God. I'm not planning on changing my course. Amen. I'm, I'm planning on doing what I'm doing and keep doing what I'm doing until Jesus comes. I plan that. And listen, that's what I'm praying. Because I want to finish right. And I want to do that course. And I want to do it the right way. And listen, I'm not planning on changing my course. I'm not going to cross on the other side of the street from talking to somebody or speaking to somebody that it's another Christian, especially, and try to ignore them. It's not going to happen. I've had them do that to me. But that's between them and God. You see, this course that we own, this work, the Bible, hey, remember now, Philippians 1, 6, he said, hey, he has begun a good work. This is a good work. Hey, if it started out to be a good work, it is still a good work. But let me just say tonight, we as Christian and believers, as far as our relationship is concerned, we can make it a work that's not so good. We can make it a hard work. You say, what do you mean by that, preacher? If you've got to come into the church house and pretend that you're right with God, that is a hard work. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You can't live for the devil and then come back in the church house and jump up in the choir and sing the while of Jesus when you know in your heart that you're not right with the Lord. Amen. That is a hard thing to do. You say, how you know? I've done it before. Now, did that bust your bubble? We all have never been everything that we should be and ought to be 100% in our Christian life. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. But I'm telling you, there's some of us that are falling way short too many times and too often when we're supposed to have that relationship that we love God, that we love His church, that we love His people, that we love His word. Y'all love that book. Amen. And people get mad at preachers because they preach the book. Now, you can go to some places, you don't have to worry about it. They've even gone to an extent of taking the blood out of some of those books. We were talking about that bloody religion a while ago. They have gone to the extent of taking the blood out of some of the books. I believe it's in the NIV Bible. Uh, in Colossians chapter 1, verse number 14, I think. I'm, I may be wrong. I'm, just, I'm, I'm trying to go from memory. I believe in Colossians 1, 14, they took the word blood out of that verse. Somebody look up Colossians 1, 14 right quick. See what it says. See if I'm right. 
Anybody know by heart what it is? That's it. They took the blood out of that. That is the key, that is the key word in the whole verse. I got news for you. It's the key word in the whole Bible. The blood of Jesus Christ. And they take it out and they say, well, that's okay. It ain't okay. Because we have a relationship and we're on a course. And I don't know about you. When I get on a course, if I'm headed somewhere, I want to know where I'm going. My soul, we went over yonder uh, Monday to that church in Traveler's Rest. And we followed uh, Brother Andrew Kerrigan's Google phone, GPS on that Google phone. And I, I got there at that church and I asked that preacher, I said, does God know where this place is at? I said, man, this man was telling me, preacher, please don't put me out. I could never find my way back home. They don't know how tempting that was for some of them. <laughs> then on top of that, we got ready to come back home after we done eat. Got ready to get back in the bus. The keys was locked up in the van. <laughs> Thought I got to stay in that God-forsaken place. And the preacher and everybody else run off and left us from that church. <laughs> Somebody said, could you walk home? Well, if I knew the way I could have. But I'm talking about the relationship and what I'm getting at. I don't want to go anywhere, Brother Ronnie, unless I know, you know, basically which way to go. This tells us which way to go. Can I say tonight that the course does not alter in that book? It's straight down the line all the time, 100%. It's not to the left. It's not to the right. Thank God it's straight down the middle. And that's what you and I have. We have developed a relationship with God that we ought to love Him like we should because of the good work that we're in. We developed a relationship with the church and thank God for the local church. I praise God for it. What a blessing. What a help it is to it. Sister Faye and Brother Rick while ago when we took them a meal down there, they were so thankful. They were so, uh, so appreciative of the meal and they thanked us time and time again. Told us how much they loved it. Hey, hey, let me just say, hey, the world's not going to give that to you. It's a relationship that we have developed. When Brother Rick and Sister Faye started coming to church here, we developed a relationship, a relationship of love as church members. And you know what? We do it for anyone here that needs it. We don't pick and choose. Well, we'll do it for them, but that crowd over there, they just have to make it on their own. No, no, we do it for anybody. And that's what it'll be in the church. We developed that relationship with the church, and we developed that relationship for the, for the people of the church, the, 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 the men and the ladies, the sisters and the brethren of the church, we develop that love relationship. It ought to be that way. And then we develop a love for his word. But there again, do we really love it like we say we love it? I wouldn't want to embarrass you this morning or tonight, but if I would ask you right now, how many read at least... 10 verses this morning in the Bible. Could you raise your hand and say, Preacher, I did. Don't raise your hand. I'm not looking. But it gets right back to what I said about that young man. Well, I said it, but I really didn't mean it. Every one of us has probably said this Lord, I love you so much. Lord, I love your house so much. Lord, I love your people so much. Lord, I love your word so much. And I'm going to start, start spending more time with you in prayer and fellowship. I'm going to start spending more time at the church house. I'm going to start loving God's people the way I ought to love them. I'm going to start reading my Bible the way I ought to. Now, how many of us, did have, how many of us have said that? But did we really mean it? If you said that, can I ask you another question? Are you still doing it? Amen. You know, talking about that thought, I was going to preach on it, but I don't about preached on it the last three times I preached. But about that thought, I said it, but I really didn't mean it. Think about old Peter. When old Peter told the Lord, said, Lord, hey, Hey, all the rest of them might forsake you, but I'm going to be with you. And before you knew it, old Peter done turned his back on God. He said it. 
but he didn't really mean it. Why? Because all it took was a little persecution. No, what happened was old Peter thought he was going to die that day too. Because they figured, boy, if, he, if, if I tell them I'm with him, boy, they're going to they want to crucify me too. You see, I've had people tell me this, and maybe you have also. I love you, preacher, and I'm with you through the thick and the thin. Brother Charlie, sometimes it gets too thin, don't it? Oh, I know Brother Charlie a long time, too. Me and him used to run bus routes together. Brother Charlie drove a bus, I drove a bus. Known for a long time. We had that relationship. And let me just say, all of us, let's just face it. All of us aren't just overloaded with personality. <laughs> right? <laughs> we all have our problems, don't we? <laughs> oh, yeah, we all do. We all have our likes and our dislikes. But you see, the Bible says that God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. <laughs> so you see, he cared for us no matter what kind of shape we're in. But I see so a lot of times people coming into the church house. Some will some come smiling. Some are coming like, man, I just wish this was over. Instead of going in, I wish I was coming out. Some act like it's just an obligation. I just feel like I got to be there. No, you don't have to be here. You get to be here. Amen. Amen. You get to come to church. You get to be in, hey, you get to be in a good work. And we have the promise as long as, we're, as long as we're on this course, the Bible says, He that hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. We're going to stay on this path. We're going to stay on this course until Jesus comes. And he says in our lives that he will perform that work and that good work that we're doing while we're on this course. And I pray to God that he will always perform that work that's within us as individuals and the work that is within us as far as the church is concerned. When this church was birthed in uh, May the 5th, 2005, this church began on a course of proclamating the gospel and trying to get people saved and birthed and born into the family of God. And God knows our hearts tonight would not want anything to happen that would take away from the good work that God started. And he's still performing it today. Amen. And we ought to thank God for that. So we see that as we own this course, we develop, we develop a relationship. A relationship to the Lord. A relationship to his house. A relationship to his people. A relationship to his word. And then let me just say also in this, I'll close. I don't have much time to spend on this. But I think it's worth mentioning. Not only have we developed a relationship in this course, but we have developed some remembrances in this course. Verse number three says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. I thank God for the memories. I'll never forget the first service that we had. In that little building, just about a half a mile over this way. Came by just a few minutes ago. Went down, took some dinner to Jimmy and Dizzy and came back by and seen that little building sitting there. I'll never forget that first Sunday we had that first service. But that little parking lot started getting full. I said, hallelujah. Remember, we come in, our friends, family were there. I think we might have had a visitor or two for the very first time, the very first service. Oh, I, hey, the course that he set for us. As I think back and I look back, and I said a moment ago that I don't know of anything that I would undo that I've done for the Lord in all these years. I've done everything from cleaning bathrooms, 
I've done everything from taking ladies' underwear out of the commodes. I ain't no lie. That's the truth. I've done, I, I, I've stayed after church when everybody else has done gone and done left and everything was, thought was all right and go in bathrooms where the bathroom is overflowed and flooded and somebody knew that bathroom had flooded and overflowed but yet they chose to leave. I stayed there and got it all cleaned up and all straightened up and all that. I'm not giving that for my glory. I'm just saying. I was more to, there's more to ministry than just preaching. Amen. There's more to ministry than just visiting people in the hospital. There's more than just praying. There's more than just Bible study. There's more than just reading. Brother Bill and myself, we've worked. We've been out at the church doing work, doing things. Way past midnight. Everybody else, home in the bed. Brother Bill, I wouldn't take nothing for it. I wouldn't go back and undo it. Because it was a course. And as I think back and I look back, I just praise the Lord that we were able to do it. And can I say that there's still plenty more to do? And if I had to do it over again, only thing I would change, Brother Randy, I'd just do more. I told the men at the fellowship meeting Monday, uh, in fact, when I got there, we, we barely got there right on time for the meeting and when I walked in the back door, Brother Chad was standing there with a the, with the, uh, microphone. He said, here you go, Brother Taylor, you're going first today. And he said, he gave me the microphone. He said, well, now that, that microphone don't have a mute button on it. I said, well, don't worry about it. I said, I think most of these guys got their own built-in mute button. They cut me off when they threw anyway. <laughs> but we got ready to preach, and I told them, man, I told them about Brother Ray Lanford. He's already with the Lord now, but one day in our tent meeting, we set up under a tent up here. And I don't remember how long it goes. Brother Ray's been dead about two or three years now, maybe longer. But I must have been maybe 62, 63. I don't know how old I was. But we was under the tent, and Brother Ray was sitting back there, Brother Ray Lamford, and he said, Brother Taylor, come here. I walked over there, and Brother Ray said, uh, Brother Taylor, how old are you? And I told him whatever it was, 62 or 63. He said, do you realize you're going to have to slow down? He said, you can't keep doing what you're doing the way you're doing it. He said, you're going to wear yourself out. Here's what I told him. I said, Brother Ray, I may not even have another day. May not have another year. I don't know how long we've got. I don't know how long we're going to be on this, lot, on this earth. I don't know how long we're going to live. But I told Brother Ray this. I said, Brother Ray, as long as I can do it, as long as I can go, I want to be at it 110%. Because if I slow up, down the road I might even stop. And there may come a time in my life that I may have to stop. But Brother Russell, as long as I can, I want to give it everything I got. And I want the devil to know it. You know why? Because this is a good work. And in the course that Lord, the Lord has led us in, we have developed something in our life that is sweeter than honey and that we love more than that we love life itself. And that's the thing that we do for Jesus. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God, I'm glad I'm saved. Amen. Glad I'm on my way to heaven. Glad the devil can't do nothing about it. Oh, yes, he'll try to stop you. I don't know about you, but if you've ever been on a road, well, you know there's stop signs, there's yell signs. There's crosswalks, there's red lights, there's green lights, there's all kind of uh, traffic devices. And those things will slow you down. Those things sometimes will stop you. And that's the way the devil is. Hey, if he could ever get you to slow down, someday he's going to throw up a stop sign in front of you. And it's going to be a lot easier to stop after he slows you down. So that's the reason I say go to it full blast. We sing that song sometimes. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. 
No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, I still will follow. That's up to you. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Though none go with me, I still will follow. No turning back, no turning back. You know what? There's so many that have turned back so many times. It is so sad. One day they're praising the Lord. One day they're raising their hands. And then just one little crook in the road. Instead of following the cross, they head back to the things of the world. That brings a reproach upon you. It brings a reproach upon the church you attend. And most of all, it brings a reproach upon the Savior that you say saved you. Amen. Amen. We have a course. I like to remember the good things. Can I say tonight, if we take time and think back, those old songwriter signs says, remind me, dear Lord. Remind me where you brought me from and what I could have been. We can think back and see some of the bad things that we did. And those remembrances are not very good. But I've got enough of good memories. <laughs> Hallelujah, I can think back and not have to worry about those bad memories. Let God flood and feed your soul with it. But they would you come if you would to the piano. Well, we didn't get near as far as I wanted us to. I'm going to just give you the rest of these and I'm going to mention to them. I'm going to preach on them. I ain't going to let you get by without hearing it. But I think about the course that developed a relationship. The second thing I said, it will develop remembrances. And then number three, it will develop request. It will develop the written word of God. It will develop a reason why I do what I do. And thank God it will develop one day and some rewards for us if we remain faithful unto him. Let's stand if you would, please. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Amen. Yeah, come on down here, Dustin. Yeah, come on down here, buddy. Can I say another thing, too, to add a little bit to the message? And all of us have needs. I'll just say tonight that when there's a need in our life, we better make sure that our relationships are right. Our relationships need to be right. While these men are gathered around Brother uh, Dustin here, going to be praying for him. If anybody else needs to come to this altar for any reason, you come. God's able to help you. We certainly want to pray for Dustin and his needs. We've seen God do great things for Dustin's life. And for a young man that wasn't supposed to live to be just a young age. How that God's preserved him. How that God's watched over him. How God's met his needs physically. How God's taken care of him. Pray not only for Dustin, but pray for Teresa. Pray for her needs. Pray for Mark. You know their hearts has to be burdened. Won't you just go to, won't you just go, those of you that need to, won't you just go to Teresa and hug her and give her a hug. Say, listen, hey, we'll pray, we're praying for you. 
You don't have to go through this alone. We're going to lift you up. You're a family. We're, we have a relationship. We love you. We're going to do what we can to help you. And be a blessing to you. Be a blessing to your family. Hey, folk, all we got is each other. Well, we got the Lord, of course. <laughs> but thank God for those that are loving. Love each other and lift us up. Lift us up in prayer. Amen. Bless the Lord. Yes. I thank God. Amen. <laughs> Woo, I know he'll answer prayer. I've seen him do it. Hey, we've heard evidence of it tonight, him answering prayer. Like that song, Sister Norma sings for us. Thank God he'll do it again. <laughs> Hallelujah. And again and again and again. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm telling you, folk. It's a blessing to have a church that will rally around you. That will love you. That will lift you up. Hey, and I got some stuff to know that sometimes we rub each other the wrong way. <laughs> it happens. But I'll tell you right now, when it comes down to it, we'll fight for our people. I had a young man, well, I had a man that was coming to our church not too long ago, and he just sort of got out on the out in left field on some things. I seen what the devil was to, doing to him. Come down, he sat down in my office back there and I talked to him and I told him, we'll be real careful not to call his name. But I talked to that person. I said, the devil's trying to destroy you. The devil's trying to get you out of the, world, out of the church and out in the world. And I said, I want you to know, I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to fight the devil for you. I'm not saying he won't lead you. And he might not get you out of fellowship with the Lord. He may get you out, but I'm telling you right now, I'm going to send up some prayers for you. Went long after that, he was back in church straightened out. Of course, he's not here now, but. I heard some things and. Sometimes, you, sometimes, you, sometimes I feel like if I could just wring somebody's neck. If I thought that would help them, I would. But you see, that wouldn't help them. We got to love them. I don't love what you do. I don't love some of the things that people do. But I love them. And I love them enough to try to help them. And there's some that I... There's some that I've told things that I, I don't know anything else to tell them. Because I done told them everything I know. So you know what I do? I tell them what I know over again. Don't give up on them. Pray for them. It's good to have you tonight. Good service. Praise the Lord. Felt a good spirit here tonight. Pray for Brother Dustin. Pray the Lord's name. All the requests that were mentioned tonight, you pray for those needs to be met. And I pray that, you know what I've been praying? Excuse me? Oh, Tammy. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't see her. Yeah, I talk loud when I have my phone. devil's putting you to the test. Just got to stay on the course. He don't play fair. 
He don't care how it hurts. He don't care what he does. He don't care if it hurts one of your kids. He don't care if it hurts your grandkids. He don't care if it hurts your wife, your husband. He don't care if it destroys your family. He don't care. You better stay on course. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He's around when nobody else ain't. Hallelujah. So pray for Tammy and Mark. Praise the Lord. Pray for each other. We all need it, men, ladies. You know what I pray for our church? I pray for hum I pray for humi <laughs> I pray for harmony, unity, and sweetness of spirit. Amen. Every time I pray, and I pray that God would put the excitement and the enthusiasm back in the hearts and the lives of the people of Emmanuel Baptist Church. And I heard this preacher say this just the other day, and I've said it a thousand times, I guess. We just need to fall in love with Jesus all over again. Amen. Valentine's Day is next week, I think. I know that's, I know that's worldly, that's not spiritually. But it'd be all right if you'd fall in love with Jesus all over again. Right. Let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. You can stay going home. Don't forget Sunday morning, bring someone with you to Sunday school. And hope the weather's good. Hope people are well. We get our business